Praise the Lord Jesus. Can we go straight to the word? 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the third verse. Are we there? Are we there? What does it say? It says, but I fear, least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Can I repeat this again? He says, I fear... Least by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Paul is not scared about demons. He's scared that you can be deceived. I don't know whether you understand where I'm coming from. You see, Paul is not afraid of demonic activity. He's not afraid of which demon attacked you on Sunday. He fears that by any means the serpent beguile you through his subtlety, that is cunningness, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Minds are corrupted from the simplicity which is in Christ. That means the gospel is supposed to be simple. Can I say it again? The gospel is supposed to be what? Simple. Simple. The gospel is supposed to be simple. And so Paul fears that men are starting to address and see the gospel as something complicated. They look at the word as something so hard. They look at the things of God and the things of the spirit as something so complicated than the world that they were in. And to Paul, this book poses a very sensitive fear because he, he's worried men might fail or fail. The Bible says that their hearts hearts have failed them because of fear. The one thing that comes after a man fearing is failing. You will always fail when you fear. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Paul is like, the gospel is supposed to be what? Simple. But he's scared that certain people do what? Complicated. I'll give you a story. One time I was on radio. A certain minister on radio said, you know, when you're just born again, And you're just, a, you're just like a fresh graduate into the gospel. Anything you want, the Lord gives you. Why? Because you're new. And behind there's this face of God saying, <laughs> wait when you make five years in the gospel, you'll see whether those things will come easy. You get it? So the Christian starts to be what? Happy because they're born again. And then they ask and then they get. And then they ask and then they get. Everything you ask is what? You have the joy of salvation. You're born again. Praise the Lord. And then as you continue to grow older, the preacher said, things start to worsen. Why? Because the Lord knew then you could not fish for yourself. Now you can fish for yourself. The preacher then knew that you needed milk to be breastfed, and now you need to feed yourself. And so, what's the mind they tell you? The mind they tell you is that the more and longer you spend in salvation, the harder life, what? So, many of you, Um, If you have just been born again, (laughs) let me correct that. No, it's not true. I repeat, it's not true. Hallelujah. Why? That would contradict the scripture that we come from glory to glory. That would contradict the word. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But the truth of the matter is this. That when a man is just born again, they are not yet corrupted in their minds by the subtlety. Of men. That's why Paul speaks of the craftiness of men and how they handle the word craftily. And for such, many of those things that were preached or shared in the minds of men were sheer corruption, but they came in the name of someone's revelation, deepness, mystery, whatever you want to call it. And then before you know it, as a person continues to go into understanding who God is, life becomes a bit harder. Than it ought to be. As they grow deeper into the things of God, they become more complicated. So actually, sometimes the deepest people look more complicated. Are you hearing me? And I mean everything around them is complicated. I don't want to give examples of the complications. But you understand where I'm coming from. 
But that is not how we learn Christ. Tell your neighbor, that is not how we learn Christ. Tell your neighbor, that is not how we learn Christ. Trust me, you're supposed to be having it easier now than you did last year. Why? Because you go from grace to grace, from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from money to money, from health to health. Are you hearing me? From relationship to marriage. Mention. From secondary to university, from university to PhD. From what to what? Come on. I am, Paul said, brethren, we are persuaded of greater things that accompany salvation. He, he, it's beyond trying to believe that you'll be well. I am persuaded you'll be well. It's beyond trying to believe that you're going to be a success. I am persuaded that you're going to be a success. It's, it's, it's beyond trying to believe God for your marriage. I am persuaded you'll get married. Why? He says, brethren, we are persuaded of greater things, better things of you. Things that accompany salvation. So there are things you must be because you're born again. Not because your father worked hard. I am persuaded. Tell your neighbor I'm persuaded. Tell somebody I'm persuaded. Of better things. Not bad things. Better things. Not ugly things. Better things. Not a poor pay. I am persuaded of better things that accompany salvation. Paul is beyond let's believe God for a marriage. Let's believe God for a new job. Let's believe God for your car. He is persuaded you must have a car. You you see, you must. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something about the gospel. See how God thinks. The Bible says, His works were finished from the foundation of the world. (laughs) They, They were finished. From the foundation of the world. <laughs> Let's go back to what was finished. He says, you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus and to good works. For which you are preordained that you might walk, not believe for. Walk, not pray for. Walk, not fast for. You see where I'm coming from. So, if, if the mind of what he created for you before the foundation of the world was good... And he has purpose that you should walk in it. That means you have a spiritual configuration to heal the sick. (laughs) It's, it's, It's beyond you saying, God, heal the sick. No, you have a spiritual configuration of running a marriage. You get what I'm trying to tell you? You have a spiritual configuration of doing business. You are created and two good works for which you are preordained that you might work from them. Now, God knew why he had to finish before you came. Such that you don't, you don't base what you do on what you think you have done, but rather on him that finished before you started. Call it the things that are not as though they were. Eh, eh? Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. First, I'm believing for a husband. Oh God, may I even see you married with children. <laughs> First, I'm believing God for a ministry. Oh my God, I see you even buying more land because your church has become smaller. First, I'm believing for an education. Oh God, I see you graduated with a PhD and you're still believing. Oh, am I preaching to somebody? Hallelujah. They were finished. So, you're not trying to do something new. It's already finished. Tell your neighbor it is finished. Tell somebody it is finished. Why don't you move in that mind? Why don't you move in the mind that it is finished? Do you know why the gospel is too complicated? Because certain people still think there are certain things they have to do. That is why. Why? There was a group of people who said, do you know how, how God anointed me? No, no, no. Can I, can I tell you how God anointed me? Let me tell you what I did. I used to fast 25 days a year. At a month. I used to eat greens. Drink water. Thank you, Pastor Isaiah. I came early for service. I gave. (laughs) Thank you. You see that mountain there? It has my feet. It has my knees. It has everything of mine. I was on that. You see, if if it wasn't for that. You know, one time I traveled in a certain country and then they showed me a certain woman minister. And then they said, see that woman? I said, yeah. You know, she got anointed. I said, no. She prayed three days non-stop and it was raining. (laughs) 
Say what? Three days didn't stop and it was raining. Then what happened? Then she got anointed. She's anointed. Why? Because she spent three days. My God, I ate burgers and I was anointed. <laughs> oh God, the sufficiency is not of us that we should boast. But the sufficiency is of God which has made us able ministers of the covenant. You're going to chew chicken and raise dead men in the name of Jesus. Why? It's not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. I understood who maketh the increase. It's called the spirit. When I understood that he that is one with the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. I just realized that what makes a difference on your life is what he places on your spirit. For example, when he says, I shall anoint thine seed. I shall pour water on your seed. Do you know what that means? It means every word that comes out of you carries dunamis. When you say, rain, fall. Ay, 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 ay. You're not believing God for rain to fall. You've spoken an anointing. Do, do you understand? By the way, I'm getting deeper here. I'm not yet even started. For some of you are already excited. I don't know what you'll do after here. Hallelujah. Everything you speak. Let me tell you a story. About six years ago, I walked to somebody and I told them, I need to do something on a radio station, a particular radio station. They told me, ah, your kind of people can't. I went to the Lord. I said, God, this is beyond <laughs> what I can do, what I cannot do. I want it. You, you can. I, I'm past. I don't know if some of you understand. This, this is beyond whether I can drive or I can't. I want a car. You get what I'm trying to tell you. He shouldn't have put crazy statements like whatsoever you ask when you pray. You should have said sometimes before your age or you consider your height or, or your education level or who you know, who your connections are. He said, whatsoever you ask when you pray. When he said whatsoever, wh- wh- whatsoever. You mean a house? Whatsoever. You mean a car? Whatsoever. Wh- what? What? Six years after, somebody in the world buys it. A stranger, not a Christian. He buys the radio station. Now, I'm in contract with them. They, they called me. <laughs> they called me and told me, come and present on our radio for free. I was even going to pay. Thank God. Thank God, oh. Oh. Tell your neighbor, it's the simplicity. Which is in the gospel. Don't complicate the gospel. You see, let me tell you something. You remember the story of Abraham and Eve? You remember the story of Abraham and Eve? Do you realize that when he tells them something about the garden, he tells them that you might eat of every tree in the garden? But not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Praise the Lord Jesus. He told Adam and Eve that you shall not eat of the tree, eat of anything, but don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and what? And evil. I used to, I asked the Lord for so long, what was about this tree? I can understand many things, but what was about knowledge of good and evil? And I, I read many commentaries, millions of commentaries. I mean, I read commentaries. Okay? I just wanted to know why, what was his problem with eating the fruit, the tree of? I think it's Genesis chapter 3, right? Huh? But the instruction was in 2, but the, the whole story of the... Sap and being sapped on stuff. But he says, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt die. Genesis 2.17, right? I used to ask myself, 
what was this tree about knowledge of good and evil? I thought it's the, the right thing is to know what's good and evil. Because that's what I was taught all my life. Simplicity. He told me, Grace, <laughs> this is eternal life. That you might know the only true God and His only Son, Jesus. Don't know good and evil. <laughs> know me. <laughs> Simple. Just know God and the only true Son. That's eternal life. What business do you have about trees? Are you hearing me? Your business is not to know who bewitched you. Your business is to know the only true God and the only Son, Jesus. Don't eat of knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil. Your business is just to know the one true God and His only Son, Jesus. That is knowledge. That is the true knowledge. You have no business of knowing who juju you, you, who sent whatever they sent on your house, who bewitched your cousin and uncle. That, no, that's not your business. Your business is very simple. To know the one true God. Why? He's, we promise. There's a promise to that. And they that know their Lord shall do. They shall go for deliverance services and not get delivered. Answer me. Simplicity which is in what? Which is in the gospel. Can I share a mystery? Can I share a mystery? You asked for it. First Timothy 2, verse 12 to 13. Women, be patient with me. I'm going to, it's going to sound offensive in the beginning, but it will be revelation in the end. He says, but I suffer not a woman to what? To teach. No, to assert authority over, but to be in what? Silence. Next line. For Adam was first formed, and then who? And Adam was not what? But the woman being was in transgression. Are you hearing me? Who was deceived? Was it Adam? So, woman should what? Answer me, women only. Answer me, women only. Because? Somebody snaked you. Are you hearing me? That woman was? And I have had a lot of people... <laughs> Twist this scripture to make it sound anything they want to make it sound. Are you hearing me? But I want to show you something about this. I was studying it and the Spirit of God told me, Do you realize Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. She was in. Underline the word. What? Romans 5.14. Let me show you something. He says, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. She was in the transgression. Abraham, Adam, owned the transgression. Americans, help me here. She was in the transgression. Adam was the transgressor. Come on, somebody. So when they say the woman should not speak, what of Adam? Come on, help me, pastors. Pastor Nixon, help me. What of Adam? I mean, if the woman should not speak, what of Adam? She was in the transgression. Don't talk. You are involved in the issue. What about the one who did it? God is trying to explain something deeper than just these things of silence in the church. Silence. Don't talk. Shh. Don't talk. Are we together? 
So, fairly speaking, Abraham, Adam, sorry, should even be past not speaking. <laughs> because according to Romans, he's the what? The transgressor. He even, the Bible says Adam's transgression. Eve did not transgress. She was in the transgression. Why? Because she was deceived. Adam was not deceived. So he was the transgressor. That is why in the explanation, Adam, what have you done? Tis the woman you what? Eve, what have you done? The serpent beguiled me. The serpent deceived me. Adam didn't say Eve deceived me. I'm trying to say he knew what he was doing. Okay, I'll explain why. Don't worry in a few minutes. So Adam was not what? Was not deceived. It was Eve was deceived. Adam knew the truth. Adam knew what? The truth. That's why when God is putting something on Adam, he says, because thou hast hearkened on the voice of your wife. The issue with Abraham, Adam, sorry, was he hearkened to her voice. He knew it was wrong. He just hearkened. But I know why he hearkened. He didn't understand his ministration with a wife. You remember when God created the man and woman and placed them in the garden? You remember that portion of scripture? Where the Bible says the Lord went in the the rib of a man and put him in sleep. Then pulled out and the Bible says he formed woman. Praise the Lord. I think it's in the last verses of chapter 2. And the Lord God caused the man a deep sleep to fall on Adam. Praise the Lord. Is that small A or, or capital A? Is that small A or capital A? So he says, And the Lord caused the deep sleep to fall on capital A Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Next verse. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. Capital W or small w. So capital A was supposed to have out of him a capital, a small W and brought her into brought her to man. Verse twenty three. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called the capital what? Ah, uh, you don't understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Do you you don't uh. Do you understand? Oh, it's a bit complicated. <laughs> You'll understand in future. Praise the Lord. That's why he says that for this cause shall a man leave his what? His father. And be what? Together with his. And the two shall become one. But the Bible says the two shall be what? One flesh. Next verse. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now, let's get into the marriage of Adam and Eve and then get Christ. And thank God it's the man leaving his father's house. (laughs) And he comes and he's joined together with his what? And the two become one what? Tell your neighbor you didn't get Jesus out. Tell him you didn't go to heaven. To pick Christ from heaven. He came for you. Because he is your husband. Chimugambe. Great mystery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so when I started to study on that line, I understood what the Lord meant. When Eve ate the fruit, you realize God didn't say anything. Are you hearing me? Yet the commandment was, thou shalt not eat. Are you hearing me? In fact, Eve was a bit more, even more sensitive. She said, 
in the scriptures. She said that we shall not eat, neither touch. She even added touching on it. As in, she was too sensitive to the law. To make sure that she didn't break it. Are you hearing me? So, the Lord tells you, sorry, he tells Adam and you, do not eat and don't what? Eat. So, we see that when the serpent comes to Eve, Eve gets the thing and what? And all of that while there is no judgment. God is waiting. God is what? Waiting. Adam ate. Qua. God is still waiting. Judgment didn't come. Are you hearing me? Next verse, the Bible says, and then they realized they were what? They were naked. And that's the place of death. That's why many Christians don't understand. The only way the devil can kill you is to prove you naked. Translating, you have nothing. You're nothing. Are you hearing me? That's the state of the fallen man. That's why when we're singing, Rock of ages, clap for me. You remember? Let me hide myself. You remember that song? Why? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cleanse me from. What does the next verse say? Not the labors of my. That's a fallen man. Can fulfill. Even a new creature is singing. Could my tears forever flow? New Testament. New creature. That guy was not even saved. Next verse. Nothing in my simply to the next verse. Naked come to the for grace. Help us. Okay. You remember that? Oh, stop singing. <laughs> the Bible says you have put on the new man. Oh, hallelujah. You put off the old conversation concerning that man. And now you have put on the new man, which has been renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created in him. You're not under a rock of age singing for a clifting. You're a new creation. In Christ Jesus. You're not naked. You're not helpless. You're not seeking for grace. You're under grace. For grace and truth came by Jesus. Do you believe it? I said, do you believe it? (laughs) So don't sing those songs. If you're singing them, sing them in the mind that you're singing them for a man who is not yet born again. Otherwise, you'll be contradicting yourself when you continue. You see where I'm trying to go? You see where I'm coming from? Their eyes were open and they realized they were what? They were naked. And they say, oh, we are naked. And the Bible says they sowed what? And that's when God started coming in the show. <laughs> the, the moment they started to make something to cover themselves, God came in. Do you realize God did not come in? From any point. Until they started to sow certain things for themselves. To cover their nakedness. And that is why the first place of revelation. Is when they heard the sound. Or the voice of the Lord in the garden. The Bible says they what? They hid. And when they hid. God called out. Adam. Where are you? He says I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid. Because I was naked. And I hid myself. Next verse. Who told you? That you were naked. Who told you? That's when we realize that somebody must have told Adam that he was naked. That's the true distinction of understanding. Perceiving by the ears. 
Hallelujah. That's when we realize that somebody spoke to Adam and told him that you are what? You're naked. Then he asked him, did you eat of this thing called good and evil? Okay. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't come in to judge the man. He's coming to help. He's coming to help. And the next thing we see, next verse, and the man said, the woman, did you eat? Yes or no? Simple. As in me, I'm righteous. She's the problem. Do you see? He still wants to find a place of of excusing himself to a place of earning a certain holiness before God by shifting blame on the woman. And that was the beginning of transgression. That's why the Bible says the law was added for transgression. That was the beginning of transgression. What is in the mind of Adam is to shift blame on another person who should be responsible and not him. Hallelujah. But Adam made a very big mistake because that was not the business God had. God, listen, and let me tell you this Adam was not under the law of Moses. Are you hearing me? Adam was not under the law of Moses. He was still under grace. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Do you understand where I'm coming from? But Adam did not understand the mind of God. There was a certain knowledge he did not know. There was something he did not ponder. There was something he did not think through before he gave that answer. I'll show you why. Let me show you a certain principle in the Bible that has been there since the beginning of the world. Mark chapter 7, just chapter 7, verse 15. Let me show you a certain principle. This is Jesus in red words. He says, there is nothing from without a man entering him can defile him. Nothing outside a man entering him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. Not what comes in. That is a principle. It didn't happen when Jesus came. It existed before the beginning of the world. So, Adam's defilement. You got it. Adam's defilement didn't come from the fruit. It came from what was from inside. That's Eve. (laughs) What deceived him had to come from inside him. (laughs) It could not come from outside. Now, when he says, I fear least you be deceived by the serpent and the subtlety, he's talking to the church as a wife this time. He's talking to Eve because Eve is the one deceived, not Adam. He's sure the Adam of the New Testament cannot be deceived. He that knew no sin, he knew no sin. He is an incorruptible seed. He cannot be defiled. You see where I'm coming from? So God's business with Adam was deeper than eating the fruit. It was deep. Listen, the fruit entering Adam is not what defiled him. But what came out of him and he hearkened to. You see where I'm coming from? You see where I'm coming from? So if you're bringing that in the New Testament dispensation. <laughs> That's why the terms of the Adamic changed. You see, Eve was the one deceived. 
She's the one that God looks for. Adam, where are you? I know you did it. Adam, where are you? But it's her. It's, you don't understand. Me, I'm working with the principal here. It's not what you guys have done that is the issue. No. It is what is coming out of you. And listen to yourself. It is her. It is her. It's not me. It's her. And God realized that Adam did not understand. Adam did not understand. He realized that the whole human race could not depend on this kind of mind. He said, let me rewrite history. Second Adam. Oh. Second Adam. He he didn't understand. Second Adam comes in the same place. Woman is deceived. He refuses to eat. He refuses to eat. He refuses to what? To eat. Because inside his system, inside his DNA, there's something that can't cause him to hearken, to sin. It's not inside his system. God realized it was a nature issue. It wasn't an obedience issue. That's why obedience is a nature in the New Testament creature. It's not a commandment. That's why the Bible speaks of the sanctification of the Spirit. The Bible says, and to obedience and the sprinkling of the blood. The sanctification you had, the separation of the Spirit that you had, is unto obedience. And to obedience and the sprinkling of blood. It's unto obedience. But some of you still think you're disobedient. The gospel is simple. You're not disobedient. You're not. But you think you are. The Bible says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit and to obedience. You're sanctified by the Spirit and to. There is a divine enablement in your spirit to obey naturally. So why do you think yourself disobedient? Or why do you think obedience to you is an issue of command? No, it's in the nature of the sanctified creature in Christ. So, when you start to walk in that pattern, you realize that the principalities, the powers of this world, were just waiting for that one thing. For you to understand that it's not about what you want to do. It's about who is in you, already programmed you to do. I'm still going somewhere. Adam did not understand. It's not what comes from out that defiles a man. But what comes from within. Listen. I don't care whether the best witch doctor in the world bewitched your marriage. It's not what is from without that defiles a man. It's what's inside. I don't care whether they fired you at your workplace and they said that you are no longer capable of doing this. It's not what they did. It's what's inside. I don't care whether they say that you cannot mount up to anything or you have a, a, continu- a discontinuing letter from Macquarie University or you have a zillion retakes. That doesn't matter. The problem is not the retakes. The problem is yeah. Oh, but my husband has failed me. No, no, he's not the problem. Hallelujah. Listen. When you find a Christian still say, I should have gone for The other day I found a fellow Christian. And she said, you know, I used to attend a certain church. And then I went to a certain prophet. And the prophet told me that there's this sister in the church. She saw me with a man. And then she loved the man also. And then I married the man. And then she went to a witch doctor. And then the prophet told me. And then the, the witch doctor did certain things. And now they are bewitching me. That's why I'm having problems. I never answered wasn't out of pride. I thought that one would also corrupt me. It was coming from outside. Uh-uh. Let me speak in Luganda. They cannot bewitch us. Listen. Okay, let them try. 
Don't even waste your time. You tell them there are men who are bored. They need some witchcraft on them. Apostle Grace, Pastor Isaiah, Pastor Zach, they are bored. Why do they all of those demons come to you? Let them come. That's why if you ever go to a man of God and they tell you they are bewitching you, thank God they are more. But some of you, how could this? And the Bible says, and because of their weakness of their conscience, the Bible says they are defiled. They are defiled because they are weak. Their conscience is too weak to believe that what the man has done outside has an effect on them inside. That's what I'm trying to say. The economy of Uganda has no business with you. The political status of Uganda has no business with you. That's what I'm trying to explain. Whether it's going to rain or it does, and that's not your business. The other day, I read in the newspapers, inflation is going to go up. What shall we do? You know, when I read inflation going up, I realize it's for them. It's not mine. Why? Because the Bible says when there is, they shall say, He said, when there is, you shall say. He said, you shall say. The moment they say, inflation is going up, you say, mine in my home is going down. Whose report will you believe? The fuel prices have gone up. Just start to dance in your living room. People say, what's up with that? Start dancing and say, why are you dancing? (laughs) Didn't you hear? The fuel has gone low. <laughs> Speaks of the things that are not as though they were. Now on that kind of appointment when a girl says, No, you're not my type. I'm not marrying you. Just step the marriage date. <laughs> How? How? Eh? Come on somebody. Talk to me. When things seem to be most opposing, that's when you're most bold. (laughs) Then they say, sorry, we're so sad. You failed the exam. Say, God, I thank you. Because I passed. I thank you. (laughs) There is a member in this room. She brought me 37. Apostle, I got 37. I told her, no, it's not 37. It's 73. She told me, no, it's 37. Look at my results. Look at my results. I told her, wait. I said it's 73. Okay, amen. And um, by mistake, <laughs> the results switched. Bwah! Apostle, it's 73. I can't believe it. Come on. What did you expect? He's the God that calls the things that are not as so they are. And she passed her exams. Why? Because to me it wasn't max. It was just the switching of figures. If you look 32, just put the three behind. Oh! If you're 31, put the three behind. Do something with your age. He said you can do all things. The gospel is that simple. With God there is nothing impossible. But you're complicating things. Tell your neighbor, don't complicate things. They're that easy. Switch the tickets. On your pay slip, switch the tickets. On your salary slip, switch the tickets. On your account. Ask Jonas. We wired money recently on his account. He said, Papa, I see money on my account. I said, yeah, that's my boy. Did you put it there? No, it's just there. Don't ask me how it works. I also don't know. He said whatsoever. Blame him. Hallelujah. 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 Tell your neighbor that's the order of things. Tell your neighbor that is the order of things. Do not complicate things. They're that simple. Hallelujah. So, 
Jesus comes in the place and God says, you know what, let me replace this Adam. <laughs> he brings the original guy. And the Bible says, number one, he knew no sin. But he became sin. This is the picture. Eve ate in this other story also. And he came to Adam and he couldn't ask, what have you done? Because Adam had done nothing. And God realizes he, he, there's a principle that can't allow him to get to Eve without through Adam. But how can he get through Adam without killing him? You get. Do you see where I'm coming from? So what he does is, he, he crucifies and kills him. Because he knows Adam has to first die for judgment to get onto Eve. And if Adam had not resurrected, Eve was awaiting judgment. But thank God he didn't stay there. I said, thank God he didn't stay there. The next thing we know, he's up. He comes back. To bring many Eves to glory. <laughs> Not of the will of man. No flesh. But born of what? God. Now if anything should happen with Eve. He knows where to go. To the one who ever liveth. To make intercession. Are you hearing me? Now. Adam was the transgressor. That's why the Bible says, by one man's sin. We were all born what? Romans 5, 12. Let's begin with 12, I think. Romans 5, 12. Give me the message version. It says, you know the story of how Adam landed us in the dilemma we're in. You see, many people don't understand this. <laughs> you, you don't die because you're a bad person. You die because a certain man landed you there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You see, I'm about to, to break this house in a few minutes. You, you die because someone put you there. So listen, you did not, and let me even explain this. You were not naturally a sinner because you were naturally a sinner. You were naturally a sinner because a certain man landed you there. You're not responsible. You see, that's how God thinks. So you, you think your way, but that's how God thinks. And let me tell you, the responsibility of your salvation is not you. The responsibility of your job is not you. That's what I'm trying to say. The responsibility of your marriage is not you. Women ought to keep quiet. They... they don't talk. Don't take responsibility of your marriage. I choose. To, no, no, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Adam, where are you? Christ. You know the story of how Adam landed us in dilemma. We're in first sin, then death, and no one exempt from either sin or death. No one exempt. So, we, listen, you became a sin because of Adam, not you. Listen, to God, he doesn't know that it's you. You, you own it, but God doesn't know it's you. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Next verse. So, that sin disturbed what? Relations with God in everything and everyone. It's what made you poor. It was what made you broke. Eh? It's what put sickness. It's what put the affliction in the insect. It wasn't, that insect was not against you. For all things were made for. That's why Eve is translated as the mother of all living things. Do you know the word Eve is translated as the mother of all living things? She produced those things according to, to, to the spirit. And the ordination of Adam upon her. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says, 
But the extent of disturbance was not clear until God spelled it out in detail to Moses. So what's the use of the law? To just spell out. You might not understand. Just explain deeper how serious this is. So, death, this huge abyss separating us from God, dominated the landscape from Adam to Moses. Next verse. Even those who didn't sin precisely as Adam did, by disobeying a specific command of God, still had to experience this termination of life, this separation from God. But Adam, who got us into this, also points ahead to the one who will get you out. He says, I failed. But there's a guy who cannot fail. He's coming. Are you hearing me? Next verse. Yet, the rescuing gift is not exactly parallel to the death-dealing sin. So, if one man's sin put crowds of people at the dead end abyss of separation from God, just think what God's gift poured out through one man Jesus will do. Okay. You woke up in the morning and by... You didn't even plan to get malaria. But by a certain principle in a certain man, you woke up and you had malaria. Just think. You you just woke up and you found a disease in your body. Your throat just has wounds. You don't know where the wounds came from. Just in the other nature. Just think. So when Peter is at that gate, he tells the man, what I have, I give you. We walk. He knew what he had. He imagined if sickness could automatically come in the other nature, much more healing would automatically come in this nature. I don't know whether you understand I'm trying to tell. Now, the place of healing is beyond let's believe the Lord. Jesus, please come up there and heal my brother. You know he has suffered. <laughs> because this realm doesn't know good and evil. It knows God. It doesn't imagine whether he will heal or not. It doesn't imagine whether you'll get a job or you won't get a job. It doesn't imagine whether you'll marry or you won't. It doesn't imagine. It's not double-minded. Somebody told me, don't you get excited when people come to your meetings? I told her, I got excited long ago. I'm past that excitement. Why? Because now I'm past God convincing me that I'll be a success. I am persuaded I'm a success. You, you see what I'm trying to tell you? Now, whether you, whether they want you there or they don't want you, whether your boss hates you or he doesn't, that's his problem. Listen, the Bible says men died for you. God will even kill a man to get you somewhere. I'm not saying he wants them dead. I'm only saying if that's the only way he'll get you there, I promise you he will. He's that serious. I'm married to another. Hallelujah. I'm married to a what? To another. This guy is no nonsense. So I'm going to tell you. So when God comes with judgment, this guy has the right to say, boss, I didn't eat. I, you see? He says, I didn't eat. So. He says, just think. Let's go there. He says, just what? Just think what God's gift poured out through one man, Jesus. Christ will what? Will do. Next verse. He says, there is no comparison between that death-dealing sin and this generous life-giving gift. The verdict on that one sin was the death sentence. The verdict of the many sins that followed us was this wonderful life. I'm trying to open you to a life that is crazy in God. 
Life sentence of blessing, life sentence of money, life sentence of business, life sentence of joy, life sentence of happiness, life sentence of everything. Haraba, karaba, life sentence of increase, life sentence of multiplication. I, I, I see God stand up from heaven and say, I send you on a life sentence of eating pork. I send you on a life sentence of being rich. I send you on a life sentence of being the best wife in the world. I send you on a life sentence of being the deepest preacher in Uganda. I send you on a life sentence of being the deepest prophet that ever been. I send you on a life sentence of nations coming to you. I send you on a life sentence of buying nations, of lending nations. Life sentence, brother! It's not for next week only. Ah, he says concerning his government. There is increase. His government, there is increase. I swear upon God, you're rich your next year, you're healthy your next year, you're alive your next year, you're rich, come on, you're wise your next year, you're intelligent next year, you're more than... I'm not trying to believe God for your finances. I am concrete sure you're going to do next year than you did last year. I am concrete sure your marriage is going to stand better than it was last year. I am concrete sure... Your business will quicken than it did. I am sure. I am sure you'll get back again. They say you had a loss and lost it all. I am so sure you'll get back again. I wish Adam understood that the one who asked could not tempt, neither be tempted by evil. In fact, what was put on the woman and Adam was not God. It was them. They forgot the picture. The picture was not who did it. The picture was they were still in the garden. And his voice was still in the garden. And he had not yet told them they're naked. Who told them? Someone came to me one time and told me, Apostle, I've prayed and I've realized things are not working. I asked her, who told you they're not working? Who told you? But they're not. I said, yes, they're not. Who told you they're not? Are they not working because you realize that you're worsening every day by prayer? You're praying every day, but things are worsening. And you think that they're not working. <laughs> when the lineage of your brethren saw worse stuff, I mean, they get a guy from prison and throw him in a den of lions. You tell the lions what's up. What's up? Cool, you cool? Bro, you cool? Cool. Can we sing a song? And a man of the Old Testament could sleep with lions in a room. (laughs) A man of the Old Testament could sink an axe. A man of the Old Testament could raise a dead woman. A man from the Old Testament of indifferent passions just found the sun and told it stunned. And the Bible says, And never was there a day that the Lord hearkened to a man like he hearkened to Joshua that day. And the Spirit of God told me, You're not a man. He says, Is it not written in your law that he are God's? <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen God hearkening to his God's? He goes past a simple hearkening to a crazy hearkening. I don't know whether you understand. He went past God ask. He, he said, before you ask, I will answer. 
Before you call, I will answer. I said, he is that passionate to a place where by the time you think, Father God, <laughs> the moment you think, the moment you think it, he is quick to respond. When Paul saw that speed, he says, with thanksgiving, make your requests. Don't put the requests before thanksgiving. Because <laughs> this guy is too fast. Oh, the spirit quickeneth. He says, with thanksgiving, make your request. Thank before you even ask for that car. Because I swear he's too fast. Savanati Tegera, my God, I feel a quickening thing here. I feel the Lord quicken somebody. Before you even ask for that job, they're going to call you. Before you think of building, they're going to give you material. Before you think of a land, somebody's going to suggest it. In the name of Jesus. Life sentence. It's permanent on you. The anointing is permanent on you. Glory is permanent on you. Wisdom is permanent on you. Peace is permanent on you. Divine health is permanent on you. Revelation is permanent on you. Vision is permanent on you. I don't really understand what I'm trying to tell you. It's a permanent life sentence. Not an equation of fix. I wish a man could see farther than what I'm saying. I am so sure you will make it. Why? It's no longer your responsibility. Women, be silent. That's why the Bible says, if a man should speak, let him speak as the oracle. Don't talk your words here, woman. I mean church. Speak his word. The lines are fallen unto me. In pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the village. Everything I touch, it turns to gold. Arabakate. Besides that, don't talk. Because you're a woman. That's why when I hear preachers speaking contrary to the word in my head, I say, that's a woman speaking. That ain't a man. (laughs) That ain't Christ. That is not the man. Nothing from outside can defile you. That's why he says in Matthew that not that which entereth the mouth defiles the man, but what comes out. You did not fall sick because you felt pain in your body. You fell sick because when you felt pain in your body, you said, I am sick. Yet Isaiah said, and none among them shall say, I am sick. You're poor because at one particular point you either mentioned it in testimony or counseling room. You went to your pastor and told him, my marriage, my relationship is failing. When you spoke it, you held yourself bondage. I'll show it to you. Matthew 15. And I'll finish with that. Verse 11. He says, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defiles the man. It's not what enters you. It's what you spoke. When the doctor said you're hypertensive, you went and told your, your wife, darling, the doctor said, I am hypertensive. I mean, if it is too much, just put it on the table and show her a report, but don't speak it. Because you'll defile yourself. Go to a counseling room and tell the pastor, thank the Lord for my marriage, even if it's failing. And the pastor will say, why? You start to say, because it's wonderful. 
my husband doesn't beat me. Even if he beat you last night and you were swelling, you say he doesn't beat me. Why? Because God speaks of the things that are not as though they were. I don't know that you understand. If God speaks that way, what business do you have confessing? Shut up, woman! Don't talk! He is your present help in times of need. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. That's the point he wants to come out and show them he big. And then you just defile yourself and say, I am sick. Don't say it. And she says, but that's what I'm feeling. We don't move by sight, but by faith. He says that the just shall live by faith. If you stop living by faith, I promise you will bury you next year. Faith is a place where we live. Faith is not a place where we survive. It's a place where we live. Some of us would have been here dead years ago, but we refuse to die. You understand? Some of us would have been buried in those caskets many years ago, and they would have to look at us, about us, with us, or our photos in albums. But guess what? We're still living. Why? Because we have faith. Even when you feel it, say it in a different way. Say, my leg is good. My leg is good. My leg is good. We'll understand what you're saying, daddy. And then we'll say, thank you, Lord, because the leg is good. Don't defy yourself. He knows he can't kill you. But he knows he can get you so sick to say, I think I'm going to die. That is why the Bible speaks of Joseph and the Bible says, Joseph said, now I can rest. That's when he died. Jacob said, now I've seen my son. I can rest in peace. That's when he died. Jacob had refused to die. Why? Because the spirit of a man sustains his infirmity. Your spirit can stand any disease. Or weakness. In fact, the word there for infirmity is not only sickness, it's weakness. Your spirit can stand through anything. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what your pastor said. I don't care who said what they said, that they said, that she said. Your spirit can sustain any weakness. I mean any. Whether it's HIV, whether it's cancer, whatever. Your spirit can stand anything. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But you're wounding it with your mouth. There is nothing your spirit can't go through. I don't care whether you lost it all, you can get it all back. I don't care whether you lost hash, you can come. Listen, there is nothing your spirit cannot sustain. There is nothing. But don't kill it. Don't kill it. Don't kill it. The moment something is busting your spirit that I can. Are you hearing me? It doesn't matter whether there is nothing that believes with you. Just go. Don't even ask how. Just go. Don't ask for explanation. Don't ask for scientific things. Are you hearing me? Don't ask for anything. Just go. As in Kawempe Health Center. Years ago. And as counseling, people pre-test counseling, voluntary counseling and testing. And a woman comes and she had lived with her husband for four years. And we checked the guy who was HIV positive and we checked the woman and she was negative. The doctors told us start using condoms and all these things. She told the doctors, you don't get it. I don't get sick. I told my fellow friends who are counseling along, I told her, let's leave this woman. Because we're not the one who kept her healthy for four years. Now there's someone saying, what is he saying? Why? Because you're colonized. <laughs> you're colonized by the spirit of the world. She sustained herself. I could not believe it. Don't try it at home if you don't have faith. Tell 
tell somebody I can do all things by Christ who strengthens me. Tell your neighbor all things. Tell him all things. Now I want all the women in this house to shut up. Men, start praying in tongues. Jesus, pray. Look at the girls. They're really scared. I'm not saying women physical. Everybody in this room, raise your hands and pray. Speak to Jehovah God. Nothing from outside can kill you. Nothing from outside. STDs won't kill you. Accidents won't kill you. Men's words won't kill you. Your brother's witchcraft won't kill you. Start to speak about your life. Say, I'm blessed. I'm building. I'm increasing. My house is big. My ministry is big. Come on, it's working. It's working. Come on. Come on. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at at gmail.com You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5pm to 8pm. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero Fenero, make manifest.